Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a good rest. I hope you, you recuperated, you got your mind back in order, because we, ladies and gentlemen, are about to dive right into the rabbit hole. We are going to dive into the rabbit hole, uh, Neo style and Morpheus sitting together uh, in the room, in the matrix. Okay, he's going to take the red pill. All right, we are going to take the red pill, literally, and or metaphorically, actually, and we are going to evaluate the trigonometric functions and discover the angles of what is, ladies and gentlemen, the Great Pyramid. Okay, so this is the Great Pyramid. This is half of the Great Pyramid. On one face, if I were to reflect it over, you would have both faces of the Great Pyramid, and they have these, these proportions. The base here is one of this triangle. This is Kepler's triangle, right? Kepler's triangle reflected over, twice over, would be the Great Pyramid triangle. It has a base one, a height of the square root of phi, and the hypotenuse of phi. Now, what we want to calculate are the angles right here. We know this is 90, so we already know one angle. We know they add up to 180, but we don't know the other two angles. And we are not, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely not going to use a protractor or one of those expensive calculators that can instantly find it. We are going to evaluate it using algebra, ladies and gentlemen. So. Prepare yourselves, because there's going to be some math involved, but it's not going to be anything harder than Algebra 1. I promise. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a tracing of what we just drew, because there's a lot of complicated nonsense going on in this picture, and I want to simplify it down to just the triangle. So this is tracing paper. It's just thin paper, thin rice paper. And all I need to do the tracing is a straight edge and a pencil. There are the materials. So I'm going to try to center the triangle on my tracing paper and draw it. Okay. This really isn't any more complicated than me connecting dots. So I've got, looks like the triangle has a point right there, a point right there, and a point right there. And that will be good enough for our angle approximations. Remember, all we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is just creating a triangle so we have a simplified image to work from. So I'm just tracing what I see underneath the paper. If you don't have tracing paper, guys, a piece of notebook paper or a regular piece of printer paper held up to a window with the image you drew behind it will work. I'm just using tracing paper because I happen to have it and it is convenient and useful. All right, so at this point, I don't even need the, the image below. I'm just going to connect my, my dots. OK, there we go. We now have the, we have half of the Great Pyramid Triangle, or we, we actually have the Kepler or Golden Triangle, based on five proportions, drawn on a piece of tracing paper. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me remove this piece of paper with the cool image on it. Let me put it away for just a moment so we only are focusing on this. And actually, I want to I want to actually harden in these and transfer this image one more time to a better piece of paper so everything is not bleeding through below it. So what I need is I need a marker. that will bleed through this paper again. So I'm going to use a marker. A Sharpie would do. Any marker would do. And I'm just going to darken in these lines so that when I place a piece of paper over, uh, an opaque piece of paper over this, I can still read the angles and redraw it just one more time. Again, none of this is actually required. It's just useful. It's it's good for the it's good for me for the camera work uh, to try to make things clear to you visually. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of paper, one of those regular pieces of paper, and see if I can't see my image through it. All right, so line up your see if i'm if i hold it at the right angle i can see through this image and i'm going to draw this triangle one more time so we've got it on a 
an opaque piece of paper that I can use for the remainder of this video. So if I'm being very careful, I still have a point there. I have a point down here. And ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, I have a point right here. So I'm just going to connect these points and make a triangle. That's going to be the same triangle, and I'll, I'll compare them so you can see. So I'm just, I'm just drawing in the lines to make the triangle, the Kepler Golden Triangle, in order that we can have a simplified visual field to work with in order to do trigonometry. All right, there's my Kepler slash Golden Triangle. So it's just a trace of the image beneath it. Now I can get rid of this tracing paper. And if I compare to the image we drew, it's exactly the same. It's just it's just the image we drew laid over. Right, so I'm only dealing with that one triangle. It's the same angles, but it really doesn't matter because we're going to calculate the angles. We're not going to we're not going to, ladies and gentlemen, rely upon some kind of crude instrument like a protractor with an angle arm. And we're definitely we're definitely not going to use a trigonometric calculator. Absolutely not. Never, never, never. I'll never do it. Those calculators cost hundreds of dollars, and you never learn the underlying trigonometry if you just learn how to plug things into a calculator. So, all right, without further ado, what do we know? We know this is a right triangle, so we can put our symbol for a right triangle right there to indicate this is 90 degrees. And we know this length right here is the square root of phi. And we know that this distance right here is represented by 1. And that this, this length right here, this length is phi. That's what we know. Now what we want to know is this angle right here, which we don't know. And we want to know this angle right here. How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, we can use something called the arc sine or the inverse sine, arc sine, inverse sine. And the arc sine or inverse sine, right, if I turn the page this way, the arc sine of one over phi, okay, will give me the angle right here. And the way that's written is, you can either write arc sine out like this, arc sine, or you can write out this symbol right here. You can write out sine inverse, the inverse sine, the arc sine, the arc sine of x, or the inverse sine of x. All right, that's what we're going to compute in order to find these two angles. Now, we really only need to find one angle. Would you agree? Because the other angle would just be 180 minus that angle minus 90, and we'd have a total of 180 degrees. So we're going to find a degree measurement using algebraic approximations uh, that are accurate to several decimal places for the inverse sine which if I'm looking at this angle here, it's just this height right here over this distance right here. Now I'm hesitant to use the phrases that people use where this is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse. So one over phi radians, right? In radians would give me this, this angle right here. I'm hesitant to do that. Uh, but similarly, I could look at this right here and say that this angle right here is if I'm going to look at the arc sine of this angle of this of this triangle at this angle to get the this degree angle right here, I would say it is the square root of phi over phi. Okay, arc sine of those in radians would give me the angle I'm looking for. All right. Now, how do we approximate this angle? How do we do that? Well, we're going to use something called we're going to use something called the Taylor series. Now, if you watch one of my previous videos, you saw that I used the Taylor series before to uh, create something. I used the Taylor series before to locate, to find the radian measurement for an angle, or, or find the side, rather, the height of an angle. But in this case, I'm going to use another Taylor series to find the arc sine. It turns out we still, even, even for this layer of complexity, it shouldn't be hard. All right, we're gonna act like we are great pyramid builders or we're Pythagoras, and we are either living 6,000 years ago 7,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, or 2,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago. We, we have no calculators. Now, we don't need this calculator right here, right? Or this simple or cal this little calculator. We don't need these four function calculators. We could do this all by hand, but that would take forever. So we are going to rely upon the 
modern convenience of a four function calculator to do simple calculations and come up with our answer. We are not going to rely on a trigonometry calculator or a scientific calculator that gives us the trigonometric functions or the inverse trigonometric functions. We're just going to look at this piece of paper, a simple four function calculator, and we're going to use our brains. All right, it's going to be that simple. All right, so the piece of information that we need is the Taylor series for the arc sine. Now I'm going to draw it using uh, a notation called uh, the sigma notation or the infinite sum notation, the Riemann sum notation. All right, just take a look at this. So here's the Taylor series. All right, I'm just going to write it out. The arc sine of x, that's the inverse sine. Okay, that's, that's this, by the way. That's, that's sine to the negative 1 of x, right? The arc sine of x is equal, and then here is the, I'll explain what I'm writing, is equal to the sum from 0 to infinity, an infinite sum. The arc sine of x, okay, the inverse sine of x is equal to the sum from 0 to infinity of the following formula. Just write it out with me and then we'll evaluate it together and you'll see that it's not as scary as it looks. 2 times n factorial divided by 2 raised to 2 times n times n factorial squared times, we're not done yet, we're almost done, x, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. I promise if you follow along you'll be able to do this. 2 times n plus 1 over divided by 2 times n plus 1. Now I know that looks complicated. It looks scary. But remember we did this before for the sign when we were trying to find the actual height if we're 48 meters away from a wall and we know that the angle of the wall is 57 degrees and we want to know the height, of the, the height of the point in the wall where the angle would hit the wall, we had to find the sine or the height and we used the sine version of the Taylor series. This time we're using the arc sine or the inverse sine of the Taylor series or the Taylor series to find the inverse sine or the arc sine. This is where we have the side lengths but we want the angle. Before we had the, before we had the angle and we wanted to find the side length. So this time we have just, we want to find the angle and not the, not the lengths themselves because we already have the lengths. Okay, so let's evaluate this just, just as we were learning this a little bit. Remember, we have a couple of things we need to remember. The first thing we, we need to remember is that the factorial works like this. It is, let's say that, let's say we're doing, uh, well, we need to learn zero factorial. So zero, zero factorial equals one. All right, that's one of those things, just remember, zero factorial equals one. One factorial equals one, because that's one times one. That equals one. Equals one times one, All right, which equals one. Now, 2 factorial equals 2 times 1 equals 2. 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 times 1 equals 6. 
3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is 6. 4 factorial, I'll just stop at 4 because you can see how this continues on, equals 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24 times 1 is 24. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 1 is 24. So that's how you do factorial math. That's really all you need to know. So let's evaluate this crazy thing at, at various numbers. We'll start with 0 because it says to start at 0. It says that you are going to, where it says n, everywhere that there's an n in this equation, you're going to put the number that you're indexing. So we're starting with 0. We're going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, like that, 4, 5, 6, etc. And we could go to infinity, but we don't need to. And you'll see why. These numbers just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, that's because this series is convergent. And you don't need to know what that means. But it means that we can. this will work as a very accurate approximation, algebraic approximation, of what you would get if you put this number, if you put the arc sine numbers into a trigonometric calculator. All right? So if I evaluate, let's say we're evaluating for uh, at n equals 0, for n equals 0. For n equals 0, I need a sharper pencil. For n equals 0, we're not going to put this sum anymore. We're actually just going to look at this, just this piece here. We're going to substitute a 0 in wherever we see an n in this formula right here. So pause the video as needed to see what I'm doing. And because it's a sum, I'm going to, whatever I get here, I'm about to do it out. Whatever I get here, I'm going to add it to the next thing. That's how a Taylor series works. All right. So I have 2 times 0, right, factorial. And that's all divided by 2 raised to the 2 times 0. Maybe I should zoom in on this a little bit. Let me do that. Let me zoom in on this just a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. All right? Good. 2 times 0 times all of that is multiplied by 0 factorial squared times x, which we don't know, okay, raised to 2 times 0 plus 1. All right, just be careful with your numbers, and this isn't hard. And we're going to divide all of that by 2 times 0 plus 1. And let's just multiply it all out, and what do we get? Well, 2 times, all right, so let me go here. Let's multiply it out and see what we get. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 factorial is 1. So zero fact, if, if 0 factorial is 1, then this numerator right here is 2 times 0 is 0. 0 factorial is 1. So we just write 1. Now, look at this denominator right here, before the multiplication sign. Denominator, two, let's go up and look at the exponent. 2 times 0 is 0. So anything raised to the 0th power is 1. So 2 to the 0th power is 1. A million to the 0th power is 1. Negative 500 to the 0th power is 1. So, create a denominator. That's 1. Now let's continue. 0 factorial is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I've got 1 times 1. So this whole thing is 1. Now that gets multiplied by this side of the equation. Okay? So just 
plug and chug, ladies and gentlemen. So x raised to 2 times 0, that's 0 plus 1. x to the 1 is x. Now, down here, our denominator. 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. So that's 1. Now, look at this part right here. Let's simplify this. 1x over 1 equals x. The whole thing just equals x. Okay, you think, wow, was that really necessary? Ladies and gentlemen, things are about to get much more complicated because now we're going to index up to, we're going to, inc we're going to go from n equals 0 to n equals 0 plus 1, 1. So now our next Taylor series is going to be evaluated at the index point of 1 for n equals 1. All right, so let's just plug it in and see what happens. So going back up here to our Taylor series, we'll look at what we get. 2 times 1 factorial over 2 raised to the 2 times 1 times 1 factorial squared multiplied by this part, this part, x raised to the 2 times 1 plus 1, that whole thing is the exponent, over, ladies and gentlemen, 2 times 1 plus 1. All right, so let's multiply it out and simplify. What is 2 times 1? That's 2. 2 factorial, 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 factorial is 2. That's it. So that's our numerator for that part of the evaluation. Now, let's look at the denominator for that part. What is 2 raised to? Now, 2 times 1 is 2. That's the exponent. 2 raised to 2. That's 2 times 2, 4. Okay, let's look at 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1. 1 squared is 1. 2 raised to the sec, 2 squared, essentially, is 4 times 1 is 4. So we have 2 over 4. Okay, now multiply by this part. Times, now let's look at this, x raised to this. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So x to the third. x cubed over, ladies and gentlemen, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So let's multiply this out and simplify. I have here 2 over 4 is 1 half, right? But let's just multiply the whole thing out and simplify. I have 2x to the third, 2x cubed, over 12. Okay, now can I simplify this further? Sure I can. I can divide a 2 out of the top and a 2 out of the bottom. So what I'm left with is x cubed over, ladies and gentlemen, 6. Okay, I believe you can follow along with that. So now, oh, just save these. Save this guy right here. All right, we're going to need him. We're going to add him to this guy right here. And we're going to keep going at least a couple more times to see what we're going to do. This is a 3. I don't know if it's the camera's not showing that very well. That's a 3. All right, now let's go over here and do for n equals 2. Do you see what we're doing? We're just indexing from 0, then 1, then 2 for n equals 2. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. Equals 2 times 2 factorial over 2 raised to the 2 times 2 times 2 factorial squared times x raised to the 2 times 2 
okay, plus one over two times two plus one. All I'm doing is plugging the index number. This Every time I see an N, I'm going to put a 2 there. That's all I'm doing. So now let's figure this out. It's not that hard. What's 2 times 2? Well, that's 4. What's 4 factorial? 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24 times 1. So it's 24, right? The numerator over here is 24. Just write it in. 24. Okay? Now let's find the denominator. Now, what's 2 times 2? This is the exponent of right here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 raised to the fourth power is 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So over here, I have 16. I'm not done yet. And now I've got to look at this guy right here. What's 2 factorial? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So over here in the denominator, right here, I've got 16 times 4. Okay? Fair enough. Now, let's leave that alone for now. Just put it in parentheses so we know we have to multiply that out. Now let's evaluate this guy right here. All right, so it's just x. Now, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So that's x to the 5th, no mystery there, over 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So now let's multiply it all out and simplify. We got 24x to the fifth on the in the numerator. Twenty four x to the fifth in the numerator. Now what have I got in the denominator? Sixteen times four, ladies and gentlemen, is sixty four. Okay, fifteen times four is sixty, plus four, sixty four. Sixty four. Sixty four goes right here. Now, I could multiply that by 5, but wait. Let me just leave it multiplied by 5. Can I simplify this fraction at all? I claim that I can. What can I pull out of 24 and 64 to make a simplified fraction? Well, I know I can pull out 2 if I don't know anything else, guys, if I know nothing else, ladies and gentlemen. If I know nothing else, I can pull out a 2. Okay, what else can I pull out? What is 8 times 8? Eight? 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 8 is 64. So, if I pull an 8 out of the top, I get 3, because 24 divided by 8 is 3. If I pull an 8 out of the bottom, I get 8. Okay? So, I just, I'm just simplifying. You could simplify however you want. So, if I uh, go over here and put an equal sign, and then just put 3x to the fifth over... Now, that's 8 times 5, that's 40. Okay? Now, just do this. If this was confusing to you, pause the video, back it up, 15, 20, 30 seconds, and watch it again. Because all I've done, if you wanted to multiply 64 by 5 and then figure out the, the simplification, that's fine. This is the simplified form of this fraction, guaranteed. All right, so draw a circle around it. All these things that we're drawing circles around, we're going to add together when we're through. So this is, so far, our Taylor series is x plus x cubed over 6 plus 3x to the fifth over 40. All right, so now let's go back, and we'll do a couple more. 
we're going to do this time for n equals 3. All right? Now you should be on a roll at this point. So this time we're doing 2 times 3 factorial over 2 raised to the 2 times 3 times 3 factorial squared times x raised to the 2 times 3 plus 1 all divided ladies and gentlemen by 2 times 3 plus 1. All right? Now let's just simplify that. Or let's actually multiply it out, I should say. What's 2 times 3? 6. What is 6 factorial? Well, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 4 is 120. 120 times 3 is 360. 360 times 2 is 720. 720 times 1 is 720. So 6 factorial is 720. Okay? Now, you can divide that by 2 raised to the 2 times 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, so 2 to the 6th power. And you say, well, I have no idea what that is. All right, get your calculator out. All right, zero it out. 2 times 2 times 2, that's to the 3rd, times 2 to the 4th, times 2 to the 5th, times 2 to the 6th. 2 to the 6th is 64. So 64, we'll write it here so we don't forget. Just double check myself one more time. 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th. All right, just to be clear. Now, I need to multiply it by this, 3 factorial squared. All right, so 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is 6. 6 squared is 36. Ladies and gentlemen, we really didn't need a calculator to do any of this. So 64 times 36. Okay? So that's, that's this thing right here. Now let's multiply it by this second part of the equation. X raised to 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. That's 7. X to the 7th all over. Now let's go over here. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay. Now what? Well... Let's just write it all out and see what we get. And it, like before, I'm going to leave this part of the equation separate from this part of the equation. So what is 64 times 36? 64 times 36 equals 2,304. All right? So I'll write out 720 over 2,304. Okay, and now I'm going to multiply that by x to the 7th over 7. Can I reduce this fraction? Oh, absolutely I can. You better believe it. Okay, so can I divide 720 by 4? Well, let's see. 180. Okay, cool. 
So I can simplify the numerator to 180 by dividing by 4. What's 2304 divided by 4? 2304 divided by 4. 576. Okay. So 180 over 576. We will write... This is an intermediate step, so I say 180 over 576. But I, I say this could be reduced further. So I wrote it very lightly because I'm going to erase this. 180 over 576 could be reduced further, ladies and gentlemen. So can 570? Well, how can we how can we reduce it? Well, I don't know. Let's just see. Can 576 be divided by six? Yes, it can. 96. All right. So this denominator can be 96. Can 180 be divided by 96? Sure. 180 divided by 6 equals 30. Now I'm down to 30 over 96. Can this be reduced? Well, let's see. I know it can be reduced by... Let's pull a 3 out and see what happens. Okay? Let's pull a 3 out and see what happens. This reduces down to 10. Right, 30 divided by 3 is 10, and 96 divided by 3 is 32, 10 over 32. Well, what else, what can we do now? I can pull another, I can pull a 2 out of this, so this becomes 5, and 32 divided by 2 is 16. Right? Okay, so I believe that that is the most reduced version of 720 over 2304 is 5 sixteenths because you can't reduce 5 sixteenths. If I've made a mistake somewhere along the way, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. But if we go back here to our master equation, we're going to reduce this down to say 5x to the 7th over 16 times 7. Don't forget that 7. You'll forget that. 16 times 7. All right, so we're not quite done yet. Well, what's 16 times 7? Hey, I'm an idiot. I have no idea. 16 times 7, ladies and gentlemen, is 112. Okay? So now that leaves me with 5x to the 7th over... 112. 16 times 7. 112. Can that be reduced? No. No, it can't. So we'll leave it just like that. All right, and we'll circle it. Okay, I will claim that if you go out from n equals 0 to n equals 3, you will get to a approximation of the arc sine that is so extraordinarily accurate that you don't even need a calculator, okay? Like, I mean, you needed a four-function calculator to get here. You could have done it by hand. It would have taken forever. But what I mean is it's going to be extremely accurate even with respect to a trigonometric function in a calculator because the trigonometric function in a calculator is just doing this, more or less. All right, so let's now write out, what we're going to do is say x plus x cubed over 6 plus 3x to the 5th over 40 plus 5x to the 7th over 112. That's going to be our formula that we're going to use to plug in values and evaluate the arc sign for our the half of our great pyramid, our Kepler triangle, our golden triangle, and find the angle. So... Go down here and write, so all of this equals, we'll, we'll write it again, the arc sine, this time I'll write sine to the negative 1, just so you, inverse sine of x equals, well, let's see, x plus x cubed over 6, x cubed over 6, Okay, plus 
x to the fifth over 40 plus 3x to the fifth over 40, ladies and gentlemen, plus 5x to the seventh over 112, plus 5x to the seventh over 112. That is the Taylor series approximation for the arc sine or inverse sine of x. So this is really what we need. We don't, we don't need this. We need this. This is our, our useful formula that we're going to use to evaluate actual numbers. Remember our roadmap. Okay, we are looking for the angle. All right, so I feel like at this point you're probably thoroughly confused. Say, what are we doing again? All right, so if I input values into this right here, I can find these angles. I want this angle and I want this angle, right? I just need to find one of them, ladies and gentlemen. So how do we do that? Well, we can find either angle because we know both sides. I think it's about time I zoom out a little bit, just a little bit. Let me zoom out so you can kind of see better what we're doing. All right, so I want to find these angles. Well, I know all the side lengths, so I can choose which one. Let's just, for the sake of it, doesn't matter. really doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I am completely indifferent about how you do this, as long as you do it correctly. So you can use this angle and find this angle, then, then find this angle by subtracting the sum of whatever this is, plus 90. Subtract that from 180, you'll find the other angle. Or you can find that angle. It's up to you. Try it both ways and see if it works. It's good practice. All right? And here's how we're going to do it. All we have to remember... Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, fellow countrymen, is that to find this angle, I just need to take the arc sine or inverse sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay? Forget that for a minute. I need to find this. To, to get this angle right here, I need to take the arc sine of 1 divided by phi. 1 divided by phi. Okay, so let's go back to our formula. This is what we're going to plug in. We're going to plug this number into, into this. Okay. So I need to get a new sheet of paper because I'm going to run out of space. Okay. So now I'm going to draw up here so we don't lose this. This is our formula for the arc sine. Let me just let me draw it back in. I'm going to transfer that from this page, from that other page to this page, just so we don't lose it. So here's the arc sine or inverse sine. Inverse sine of x equals x plus x cubed over 6 plus 3x to the fifth over 40, plus 5x to the seventh over 112, right? And it could go on. It could go on infinitely, in fact. But that's all we really need. So now we said that we wanted to find this angle right here. Okay, but we know the side lengths, so what we're looking for is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over phi. Make sense? So I'm just going to say that what we're really looking for here is sin, uh, inverse sine or arc sine of opposite 
over hypotenuse, which is 1 over phi. Now before I continue, I want to find this number. I want to find this number to some critical approximation so we're not messing around uh, with the phi the whole time. Okay, so let me actually calculate that. So we have a decimal that we're using in here. Phi equals 1.618033701154. All right, so I'm going to take 1 divided by that number. 1 divided by 1.618033701154. And I get this decimal right here. Now, you might think, Wow, that's a long number. Let's use the whole thing, okay? Let's use the whole thing. So what I'm looking for here, ladies and gentlemen, is the sign. The arc sign, rather. Or inverse sign of this decimal right here. 0 0.618033. Four zero nine eight four five. That's the that's what I'm going to do. So everywhere that I see an X in this formula right here, I'm going to put this number. Yes, I am going to write it out over and over and over again, and then calculate it for your benefit, ladies and gentlemen. I do this for you. Okay, I live and breathe just for you. So here we go. Just going to put this below so you can see the thing that's going to go off the page. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to say the sign, the inverse sign of this equals. Now I'm going to plug in here, 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 and here. Okay. Point six one eight zero three four zero nine eight four five plus I think it's important to write it out so you see what's you know you're you're locked in you're seeing what's happening in real time there's no funny business going on in the background okay so now we're gonna put this cubed over six so we're gonna say point six one eight zero three Four zero nine eight four five cubed, ladies and gentlemen, over six. You know, where's that staples button? Ladies and gentlemen, push the button. That was easy. All right. So now plus, just write it again, three times. Then there's that number. Point six one eight zero three four six one eight zero three four zero nine eight four five zero nine eight four five race to the fifth. Don't forget that all over forty. Okay, nothing hard about that. No big deal. Now, we just add in this last term. Five times. Guys, this couldn't be any simpler. Point six, stay with me, six one eight, zero three four, zero nine eight four five, raised to the seventh. Okay, this whole term over. 112. All right, that's that's what we're going to do. I'm going to I can't even see it all, but um, the inverse sign of that of 1 over phi, which is that number right there, okay? Because phi is a number, 1 is a number, 1 over phi is that number. You plug it all into this Taylor series right here. And you multiply all that out, okay, which we will do. 
And what you're going to get from doing that is that angle right there. Okay? Now, it might come out in radians. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't actually recall. But that's the, that's the number we're going to find. So let's do that. Let's do that math. Okay, let's do that math. Equals. Point six one eight zero three four zero nine eight four five. Right? That's what we want. So we're gonna write that again because we gotta do all these other intermediate calculations. Point six one eight zero three four zero nine eight four Five. Now, don't rush through this. Your temptation is to rush through this. You say, I'm bored. Well, okay, but now we're going to cube this number. So we're going to multiply it by itself twice. Okay, so here we go. Times 0 0.618304098845 times point six one eight don't make a mistake zero three four zero nine eight four five equals all right so that is point two three six zero six eight one zero three two over six. Next term. Now this time we're going to have to multiply whatever it is by three. So right now all we're doing is the square part. I'm showing all the steps, right? So strap in because it's going to it's your boredom time. All right. So we can actually help ourselves. I got to three right here. Remember this was this was this whole crazy number cubed. Well, if I just multiply it by itself two more times, I'll have it to the fifth. So this saves you some time. So you just go times 0 0.618034098845 times 0 0.618034098845. And ladies and gentlemen, that gives me this number raised to the fifth. Okay? So let's write it out. Point zero nine zero one seven zero zero two three seven seven. Okay, fair enough. Now that's going to be divided by forty after I multiply it by three. But we haven't done that yet. Right. Now remember, this number was 1 over phi to the 5th. So if I want to get to the 7th, which is where I need to, I just need to multiply it by itself two more times. So times 0 0.618034098845 times 0.618. Eight zero three four zero nine eight four five equals, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this is one over phi to the seventh. So this is equal to this. This term here is five times that number right there in the calculator, which is point zero three four 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 one eight nine six five three and ladies and gentlemen the benefit of doing this is if at any point you make a mistake you have written down every step so many students just write down they write down the answer they don't write any of these intermediate steps down so they have no idea where they made a mistake the teacher can't tell so it's hard to get partial credit little hint okay you write out all the steps the teacher will love you forever like you for always as long as you live your favorite student Okay, you will, his favorite student or her, her favorite student you will be. Now, let's actually complete 
The next step, I know you're wanting to pull your hair out, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, calm down. We're going to write this again. We're only going to do one step per line. Too bad if you're bored. So we're just going to write out 0 0.618034. 09845 plus now we're actually going to do this division because we can we're in the final state this final stage of this division so let's take this 0 0.23606 081032 ladies and gentlemen okay now divide by 6 and that gives us 0 0.0393446838386 plus. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. We are going to take this term, multiply by 3, and divide by 40. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. 0 0.09. Zero one seven zero zero two three seven seven times three. Okay, that equals this. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide by forty. Okay, I'm going to divide by forty. So that's what the angle. Let's just get that. That's what I'm going to write down. That number right there. That was three times point oh nine oh one seven. 0, 0, 002377 over times 3 over 40. Okay? So it comes out to 0 0.006767 0, 0, six, seven, six, seven, seven, Plus. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're almost there. Just hang on. Okay? We're going to take this term. 0 0.03444189653 times 5 over 112. Here we go. 0 0.03444189653 times, ladies and gentlemen, 5. Okay? And we're going to take that term, 0 0.172209482265. We're going to divide that by 112. And we are going to get, ladies and gentlemen, Drum roll, brothers and sisters. Okay, we're gonna get that number right there. Point oh oh one five three seven eight uh, seven five eight four six six. Okay, so I'm just gonna write it down. Point zero zero one five three seven five eight four six six. Well, now even if you were confused at the beginning, all we have now is an addition problem which you can all do, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, fellow countrymen, okay? Workers of the world, let's start adding, right? That's all we're going to do. 0 0.618034098455 plus this term right here, 0 0.03934468. Eight six plus next term point zero zero six seven six two seven five one seven eight plus point zero zero one five three seven five eight four six six equals Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll. Point six six five six seven nine one one eight seven five. Okay, now let's just see where we got. This is radians. So sine, this is the arc sine or inverse sine of 1 
over phi equals that. That's remarkable. So we use the Taylor series. We did all this stuff. Okay. Look how far we've come. And now, if I convert those radians into degrees, I'm going to find this angle right here. That's what I'm going to find. So how do I convert radians into degrees? Well, remember, all I have to do to convert a radian into a degree, any radian, is multiply that radian times 2 times pi over 360. Okay? So let's do that. Let's take this radian. Right? So if I want to know the degree, if I want to know sine, the inverse sine, the arc sine of 1 over phi in degrees, ladies and gentlemen, here we go, in degrees. So I want to keep my line straight. Here's how we do it. We take that radian measurement right there, which is, ladies and gentlemen, 0 0.6, 6, 5, 6, 7, 9, 1, 1, 8, 7, 5, right? And I multiply that times 2. Okay. That whole thing right there is divided by 360, because there's 360 degrees in a circle, ladies and gentlemen, and then all that is multiplied by pi. Okay? So, let's see where we get. If I take this whole thing right here, I've got this whole thing set up wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to make an enormous mistake, and I'm going to stop myself, okay? And if I had a video editor, I would cut this out because I'm doing this wrong. I was just sort of lost in the melody of my own voice. If I want to, okay, this is wrong. Do not do this. Do not do this. I, I'm, I, I just got ahead of my own voice, but I'm not going to make the mistake. You have, we have not made the mistake yet. We've walked up to the precipice. And we have stood on the edge, okay? And we have almost fallen off of the cliff, but we did not. We stopped ourselves. And because we wrote in pencil, ladies and gentlemen, the whole thing could be erased. And if I had a video editor, I could just, whoop, just get that whole piece, take it out. But I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to leave it in so you see that people, ladies and gentlemen, can make mistakes. All right, so let me just start over because we were almost there. I just, in my head, just made a little mistake. So if I want to find the inverse sign of 1 over phi in degrees, and I know the radian measurement, here's what I do, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm going to call the degree, let's, let's call the degrees x, okay? x is my degrees. So here's what I'm going to do. I know that my formula for degrees is x times 2 over 360 times pi, and that that would equal the radians, okay? So I was just, just on the edge of being right. So here we go. Uh, but I would have been wrong. So that equals this. Whatever x is equals this. I just have to find x. So let me just put it in. Sorry about the mistake. Okay, it's been a long, tiring process to, to speak this entire, narrate the entire video to you while keeping my mind focused on actually doing the math correctly. But uh, I promise you, I absolve myself. Okay, I apologize. I have repented. And I will now continue to do the problem correctly. 0.6656791185. Okay, I'm going to give everybody a second to catch up with me. Because I started to make a mistake and then I corrected it. So now I'm looking for the degree measurement of that radian. And that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to solve for x now. Okay? It's going to be pretty simple. Here's what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends. What we do is we want to get x by itself. We want to get x by itself, ladies and gentlemen. 
So let me pull out here the x. Let me just let me rewrite this in a different way. So here's the x, and that's multiplied by 2 over 360, and that's multiplied by pi. Okay, and all of that equals 0 0.665679118875. All right? So, here's what we can do. Because we know pi, so here's a little sidebar, okay? Pi, well, I'll write it within the visual field. So it's just a little sidebar. The approximation of pi that works is 3.14159265. That will work, okay? That's not the exact number for pi, but it's close enough for what we need, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this out and just get x by itself. So, But first, we're going to multiply it out so we're working with real numbers and not just stand-ins for real numbers. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take pi, using that approximation, times 2 and divide it by 360. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. 3.14159265 times 2 equals 6.2831853 divided by 360. That gives me that decimal right there. Do you see that? So that equals 0 0.01745329255 equals point six six five six seven nine one one eight seven five all right so now that's our problem to solve well here's what we do we divide out this number on both sides and that will give us x in degrees ladies and gentlemen so i'm going to divide out point zero one seven four five three two nine two five on both sides, 0 0.017453292525. Okay, I've got that divided out on both sides. So now it's gone on the left side of the equation. It's gone. Finished. Done. Forever. Gone. So now I have x by itself. What I'm about to show you, ladies and gentlemen, okay, get your popcorn out, all right, get your drinks. Get your ices, get your nachos with cheese and jalapenos, recommended, and hot dogs, pickles, everything. Get them ready. Start the recording. Call your parents. Okay, take the photo. Line up. Because when we do this division, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are going to get that angle. That's what we're going to get. And we did not use a trigonometric calculator. We used an approximation using algebra. Okay, so here we go. Point. Six six five six seven nine one one eight seven five. Moment of truth divided by point zero one seven four five three two nine two five. Ready? Are we ready? Are you buckled in? Here we go. Equals thirty eight point one four zero six zero four zero five seven nine. Here we go. So that is the angle measurement. Three. 38.14. Okay, and we're going to leave it just like that. That's going to be the degrees. The degrees. Okay. It's a long, long road with many a winding turn, right? As the old oldie song goes. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is that degree right there. So we're going to write it in. Oh, yeah, we're going to write that in because that is, a, that is worth writing in. 38.14. 38.14 degrees. Now, we know this. Now, we know that's 90, so we can find this angle really easily. We don't need to go through that whole mess all over again. So, 38. Well, actually, here we go. 180, which is the total internal angles of a triangle, minus 38.14 
will give us, or minus 90, will give us this angle right here. Ready? Here we go. 51.86. 51, ladies and gentlemen, 0.86 degrees. Those are the phi angles for our triangle. Now, here's what I want to do. I want us to take all of our beautiful labor, all of our beautiful work, and transfer the information we just gained back to our original diagram. So this is what we learned. Let's make sure we got it aligned correctly. My one's on the bottom, okay? So this angle is 51.86 degrees, and this angle up here is 38.14 degrees. Don't transpose those numbers incorrectly. That would be a tragedy. So here we go. I'm going to do it like this so the whole thing can fit in frame. And I'm going to use a pen and draw this in so you can see the angle. Okay, so this angle right here, that angle right there is equal to 38. 0.14 degrees. And this angle up here, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's been a hard fought battle. Lots of blood, sweat, and tears. But we made it through the mud and the blood and the beer together. And here we are at the end with this angle of 51, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, 0.86 degrees. Okay, this is 90. So we'll put this in as 90. Now, do you believe me? It's a better question. You should be skeptical. Okay, so if you have a fancy calculator, the time is now, ladies and gentlemen, to get it out and check to see if the person who has just been talking to you nonstop for several hours is a total complete moron. All right, so here is my ultra fancy calculator that I don't need, okay? But because I buy useless things all the time, all right, I bought it. And now I'm going to calculate the arc sine, ladies and gentlemen, the arc sine of one divided by phi, right? Now I don't have phi as a constant here, but ladies and gentlemen, I can take one, where was my, where was my approximation? Where did I put my approximation? I think it's hiding underneath this piece of paper. Yep, there it is. All right, I'm going to need some of this data. So here we go. Put this back here. Okay, let's check. Moment of truth. Okay, if I'm wrong, shut the video off. Okay, write a bad comment. Throw everything away and try to reclaim the time that you've lost. So what I'm saying is that the arc sine, the inverse sine, this angle right here, this degree angle right here, make sure your uh, TI calculator is in degree measurements, otherwise it'll spit out the radians, um, of the opposite over the hypotenuse, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be something like 38.14. It's going to be different. It's going to be slightly off. Okay, it's not going to be exactly right, but it's going to be extremely close. It's going to be extraordinarily close, monumentally close, close enough that you are going to write home to your parents. You are going to call your friends. You are going to write to your governor and your representative and your congressman. Okay, You are going to tell everyone you know. You're going to call CNN and the newspaper and tell them, I am able to find angles using information. Okay, Here's what we do. And I don't need a trigonometric calculator. You're going to call TI and say, you're completely worthless. I don't need you anymore. So let's do it. One. Divided by. And then I'm going to put in the phi number. Okay. Which we said was. Phi is equal to. One. 
five, four. All right? Close paren. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to show you. Does it equal 38.14? Enter. Aha! Wonderful. I'm actually very, very pleased to show you this image. All right? You see it come out to 38.17? If you were, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you were rounding to the nearest degree, ask yourself this question. Would you be right to have done it this way? Yes. Yes, you would. Right? You did not need this TI calculator, even though the problem that just took us over an hour only took you about four seconds on this calculator. You did not need it, ladies and gentlemen, because math works, and there are ways to approximate these values without relying upon a $150 calculator. Okay? So, now, let's just double check our other angle. Okay? Now, all we have to do is subtract all this from 180, but we'll show you another way. I can also... I don't need to do, I don't need to know arc cosine or arc tangent, any of that. I can just turn the triangle around, okay, and observe that this distance is now the sine, and this distance is the hypotenuse, right? So this is the opposite now, and this is the hypotenuse. So new problem. Let's try to find this angle here, ladies and gentlemen. And what we're going to do is arc sine of square root of phi, okay, so I need square root of phi. So I'm actually going to create the square root symbol. And then I'm going to put phi, which is 1.618033701514. Right now I'm going to get out of that square root and divide that by phi, which is 1.618033. 337015. Close paren. Now, moment of truth. This should equal something very close to 51.86. If we were to round, we should get 51 degrees. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, pull your chairs up, strap in. We're going to hit enter and see if I am right or wrong. If you are right or wrong, if you've been following along, this moment of truth. I'm keeping you in suspense, and now I'm going to hit the enter button and see what we get. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for 51.82 degrees. Okay, we are extremely close. If I round up to the nearest degree, ladies and gentlemen, I would have 52 degrees according to my infinite, infinite, infinite sum based on the Taylor series. And according to this super expensive calculator, I would also have 52 degrees. So, do we need this calculator? No. Did I just prove that this calculator is completely useless to you? Yes. Did I just prove that I have nothing better to do with my time and money than spend money on this expensive, expensive calculator when I could have just used awesome, blossom, cool math in the form of a Taylor series for that Taylor series right there for the arc sign in order to find these angles with nothing more than a $1 calculator from the convenience store? Yes, I did. Clap your hands. Put your hands together. Stand up. Okay? Tell your friends. Post it to your Facebook. Tweet about it. Okay? Put it on Insta. Snap it. Tell everybody that, ladies and gentlemen, you are a geometer. You are an, arith uh, an arithmetic genius. You are a trigonometric wonderkind. You are a great py pyramid builder. Right? Welcome to the club. All right? So now, let's zoom out for the awesome shot at the end when we have everything in frame. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're gonna zoom out and then we're gonna be finished. It's all gonna be over, okay? Here we go. The whole thing in frame. It was a long journey, ladies and gentlemen, but we got there, right? We now have the angles of the Kepler triangle we have the five proportions. We have the golden section. Right? And just as a, uh, a final coda, a closure, I, I found out that the way I need to refer to these uh, squares and how they relate to, if you watch the first couple of videos, the Fibonacci sequence, is that that is one, and that is one, and this is two, and this is three, and this is five. Okay? One, one, two, three, five. And if I were to continue making big triangles, the next, uh, pardon me, making squares. The next square would be like here, would be right here, this square right here, this enormous square, my finger's going off the page. 
that would be the one, one, two, three, five, eight. That would be the eight square right there. Okay, so the eight square would sit over here. It would be the whole square formed right there. But I don't have room to draw the eight square. So we're just gonna leave it right that. So it's all squares. So that is it, that is it. This is a beautiful image. And let's just take a look so we can gloat one last time at what we did. First, we took, after we made our Fibonacci spiral and we, we made the Kepler triangle, right? The golden triangle, the phi triangle. We then transferred, ladies and gentlemen, we transferred this image to tracing paper and then redrew it. So we had an opaque piece of paper. So there's our same triangle. We didn't know these angles, but we used something called the Taylor series approximation for the arc sine, right? So let me zoom out even further so you can see the entire piece of paper. At this point, we're just gloating. We're just, we're, we're just running around showing people our medals. So no problem. But let's walk through what we did so you don't get lost. Now here's the Taylor series, right? There it is. And here's the Taylor series written out in a formula that we can just plug numbers in, right? What do we do then? Well, we plug the numbers in, right? We took the, we were trying to find this angle here. So we took the opposite over the hypotenuse, one divided by phi. We actually found that number as a decimal out to several digits. And then we just plugged in all of our information into that formula. We plugged all of our, we plugged this number into this formula and we multiplied it out using nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, more complicated than a four function calculator that I bought at the convenience store for a dollar. And look, the little piece is even broken, it's bent, but it still worked. And then we got down here and that's just where I almost made a critical mistake. I wanted to find what we ended up with with here is we ended up with a radian measurement and I needed to convert that radian to degrees in order to get the degree angle. So I, I started to write it wrong, but then I caught myself. I said, ah, the degree times two over 360 times pi equals the radian. So the degree I'm looking for that I don't know times two over 360 times pi equals the radian that I found using the Taylor series approximation for the arc sine or the inverse sine. So then I substituted my numbers I had a decimal approximation for pi, 3.14159265, and I put that in, and I got x by itself and divided out the appropriate numbers, and I came up with 38.14 degrees. When I plug that into the calculator, ladies and gentlemen, the fancy calculator, transferred it all back, plugged it into the fancy calculator, if you recall, we came up with, 38.1727 That's what we came up with. Now, if we round out to the nearest degree, we had it exactly right. To the nearest degree, we were exactly right. 38.17, 38.14. We're off by a hundredth of a degree. No problem, right? Here, 51.86. We came up with, we took the arc sine of square root of phi over phi, we came up with 51.86 degrees, and the $150 calculator told me that it's 51.82 degrees, or 83 degrees, okay? So we were off by three hundredths of a degree. I'd say that, ladies and gentlemen, that we were really, really close. Now, uh, I don't want to turn this into a tutorial about TI calculators, but if you find yourself staring at this and you're not getting these degrees, it's because you're in radians. You need to turn your calculator into a degree calculator. So hit mode. Okay, right there, there's the mode button. Every TI calculator has a mode button. Hit the mode button. Go down here and it'll have a radian and degree measurement. And if you hit enter, it'll change it from radians to degrees. You can change between radians and degrees. So you want to put it on degree in order to get that degree measurement and then just hit uh, second, the second button and then quit to go back. Now you're back there, okay? I hope this has been an educational video for you, a series of videos. Remember to like and subscribe and share this with your friends. Share this with your math teachers. Tell the world that you can now calculate to an approximation correct within three one hundredths of a degree without using 
a trigonometric identity, or a tri uh, pardon me, a trigonometric uh, function calculator. Angles, knowing the side lengths. In a previous video, we found the side lengths without knowing the, well, if, we, if we knew just the angle. But now we found the angle just knowing the side length. So I proved that not only can we use a Taylor series approximation to find the sine, but we can also use the Taylor series to find the arc sine. And that will conclude today's video. Combine this with the other video that we watched, and you'll have a full picture of how we do trigonometry without a trigonometric calculator. And what's excellent about this one is that we use the five proportions so that all of this cool trigonometry that we did is, is here with the Fibonacci spiral and the sacred geometry and the golden rectangle. It's all in one beautiful image for you. Just one beautiful image. And I'll leave it right there. Thank you very much.